beyond a discussed conversation and remember you can engage us on our social social media handles wow what did i have for breakfast okay you can engage us on our social media handles that is ktn is ke at grace korea ke you can also call in live at some point uh you know in the conversation especially after we take our first break now my guests are with me in studio mr henry omutai and madam linda omutai thank you so much for joining us karibu sana uh, so I'd like us to start with the story of how you two met. Before you tell us about your child who you unfortunately lost to cancer, uh, just take us through, you know, how you met and how you started a family. Uh, Linda, if you'd, if you'd, go, okay. if you'd go first. <laughs> um, actually, we met in 2000 and, uh, no, 1999. Mm -hmm. um, I, I had gone out of the country to study. Mm -hmm. When I came back, mm -hmm. I found him staying in a... Uh, in our neighborhood. Um, he was actually um, a sound technician in one of the churches in Kitale, that's where we met. Mm -hmm. And then after that, we just developed a relationship. Mm -hmm. Then I was to go back to study, but God had his own ways. Mm -hmm. And um, I didn't get my visa to go back, so I had to, to stay back and uh, do my studies here. Mm -hmm. Then after a while, uh, we actually related for about seven years before we got married. Wow. Yes. Wow. Yeah. Uh, why did it take seven years? <laughs> uh, it was an uphill task. Yeah, actually, I used to live next to their compound, mm -hmm. and I fell in love with her through a wall portrait. Just yes, saw her on the wall portrait and wow. fell in love, and went like, okay, I think I like her. <laughs> what you saw. Wow. And then I would begin the journey, and it was really tough. It mm -hmm. was really tough, you know. She had gone to school in America. On coming back, she needed to further her education. Mm. And uh, having to wait for all that, you know, and actually I didn't have enough money to like strike a deal of getting married mm. right there. Mm -hmm. Yeah, so I had to work by, or with what was coming my way then. Mm -hmm. Yes. Okay. So we had to wait. Yeah. Okay. So now after seven years, mm -hmm. you get married. And of course, you decide to now start a family, have children. Take yeah. us through that. Um, we had we actually said we wanted like two children two kids no i wanted three children he had he wanted two kids mm -hmm. and uh anyway we had a honeymoon baby and we have a firstborn in 2007 we got married in 2006 in mm -hmm. 2007 we had peniel that's mm -hmm. our first baby mm -hmm. she's about 11 years turning 12 actually yeah. next uh, in a month's time mm -hmm. two months time mm -hmm. and then from there we had our second baby now who reina who passed away mm -hmm. then we have a a third baby blessing mm -hmm. who has down syndrome then we have uh grisha now the the last one mm -hmm. who's a boy now mm -hmm. yes okay so let's talk about your second born mm -hmm. and uh probably how she yeah it's, it's, a, she. A, it's a, yeah. A, a she right yeah. how you know she grew up uh to the point of now discovering that she has cancer in 2010 mm -hmm. um, she developed a boil something like a boil which they refer to as an abscess which is a big boil and uh, we went to the hospital mm -hmm. and they told us it's a boil and they need to remove the discharge from it and uh, it's a process also they said it's supposed she's supposed to go under a uh, uh, theater mm -hmm. it's a, what was it called um, it's a day day theater not a theater that you have to go for the whole for, for a long time mm -hmm. it's a day theater mm -hmm. uh we didn't have money at that time mm -hmm. to to take her through the, the, the that small shop theater uh so we decided let's uh let's give her antibiotics they said we can work with antibiotics mm -hmm. and then after that maybe if she if, if she doesn't respond well then we can we can decide to go for the theater mm -hmm. uh, but uh, on returning back home, she was still in so much pain. Mm -hmm. So we went to where we went, went to get the drugs from the chemist. That lady is a nurse. She mm -hmm. told us, "Why is the baby crying this much?" We told, we explained to her what the process, what what, what was wrong. Mm -hmm. Then she explained to us, "Why don't you go to get roots and have a second opinion? Mm -hmm. Because this might uh, this might be something else mm -hmm. that's developing." Yeah. So we said, "Okay, yeah." That sounds great. Let's go for a second opinion. We went to get roots. Mm -hmm. um, they, they still confirmed it as an abscess, mm -hmm. but they were much much cheaper than the hospital we had currently gone to. Mm -hmm. So they say they could do the, the surgery during the night, and then we'll just take the baby back home with mm -hmm. us. Mm -hmm. We agreed. We looked for the money. She had the surgery. We went back home. But after a week, uh, the, the, the abscess came back. But now it was bigger. Mm -hmm. Now it looked like a tumor. Mm -hmm. Uh, that's when we, we decided, no, this is something else. We went back to that nurse. That nurse told us, you know what? You guys um, look for us for another, for another doctor. 
and get another opinion again. Mm -hmm. uh, we decided we'll, we'll go, okay, no, I called my aunt. My mm -hmm. aunt told me, you know what, you guys go to Kenyatta, mm -hmm. look for a, for a certain doctor, he's an oncologist, mm -hmm. and get, um, get to know what's happening. Mm -hmm. And that's what we did. Mm -hmm. And now from there, we or referred to another doctor in Kijabi Hospital, mm -hmm. uh, where actually he insisted that we have to uh, take the baby there for admission mm -hmm. and go for major surgery. And actually we had to raise money. We, were, we began looking for ways of getting money, enough money they actually didn't they were asking for, which was coming to something close to 400,000 or so. Mm -hmm. Yeah. So we began now calling for friends for help, you know, it, was, uh, it wasn't an easy thing. Mm -hmm. And then at that particular moment in time, she wasn't working. She mm -hmm. wasn't working anywhere, so every coin was coming, uh, like towards, towards the uh, medication was to come through me. And actually well wishes, friends from uh, all over. And we want to thank God, actually, we had friends who stood by us mm -hmm. and would come in, come through for us, giving like uh, 5,000 or so. Mm -hmm. We were able to take the baby for surgery. Mm -hmm. That surgery, that's where now the experience began. Mm -hmm. It wasn't an easy thing. Mm -hmm. uh, she was booked in and uh, uh, they actually told us it was going to last for about uh, two or three hours at most. Mm -hmm. But when the baby was taken to the theater, we waited for the first two hours, third hour, fourth, fifth, sixth, all the way from 7 a.m. in the morning. Uh, the baby was returned back to us at uh, 5 p.m. in the evening. Yeah. You know, we were losing patience, you know. Yeah, what's, what's going on? It was really no, no explanation. Uh, we keep checking hours. at the door. Uh -huh. He had turned back. Mm -hmm. Kindly just have a seat. Wait, we'll let you know what is happening. Mm -hmm. And so we became so curious. People are calling. Kindly tell us what is not happening. Mm -hmm. Uh, is there any other developing story that we, you don't want to share with us? And we are like, we also in darkness. We had people actually who were keeping us there, uh, talking to us. They all actually gave up. At around one, they had to leave, you know, we can't wait any longer. Mm -hmm. But now friends and family members kept calling, mm -hmm. kindly share with us what is happening. But mm -hmm. you know, at five, around 5.30 in the evening, the baby came back uh, uh, being pushed on a trolley. We are like, oh, so she's still alive, you know. Mm -hmm. But now we couldn't even take a meal, you know, we're not at peace at all, at all, yeah. Mm -hmm. But again, she, she was treated. We were actually discharged from Kijabi Hospital after, after a week. We came back home. Mm -hmm. yeah. Okay, yeah. Alinda, before you actually carry on with, you know, mm -hmm. from where he stopped, okay. mm -hmm. uh, let me take you back to when you were waiting. Mm -hmm. He says from 7 a.m. Mm -hmm. to 5 p.m. Yes. So he's told us, you know, you would get nervous, friends would keep calling, asking, is there anything you're not telling us? <laughs> so as the mother, Linda, what was going through your mind? Um, actually, I was, I was thinking maybe my baby has even passed away. Mm -hmm. She's gone. Mm -hmm. And they don't want to break the news to us. Mm -hmm. And, uh, but you're still holding on, you're saying, no, 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 let me just have faith. Mm -hmm. But, um, y y y your heart is not at peace at yeah. all. Yeah. You, f you feel broken, you feel lost, because mm -hmm. you don't know what is really happening. Mm -hmm. But um, the w w later, later on is when they explained to us and told us, you know what, the surgery took long because after we removed the tumor, mm -hmm. they had a, like a hole in her. They did know how to fill it up. Mm -hmm. So it was a challenge to actually just cover the whole thing up. Okay. That's why the surgery took long. Okay. And uh, the amazing thing is that after Reina came out from surgery, she was herself. Mm -hmm. You didn't even know she had gone through the surgery. She was just bubbly. She was a very bubbly girl and mm -hmm. she was very talkative mm -hmm. and she was very eloquent. Wow. <laughs> yes. Wow. Yeah. I can tell she got it from you know, <laughs> <laughs> Okay, okay. Uh -huh. yeah. So yeah. what happened after that? Uh, so after, after the surgery, after I went back home, uh, they, they, they say they were going to do a biopsy on it first because they didn't know whether it was cancerous or not because mm -hmm. uh, they, they said sometimes it can be cancerous, sometimes it cannot be. Mm -hmm. So they say they'll first of all do a biopsy for it and then after that they'll, they'll, they'll call us back for the results. Mm -hmm. That's what they did, they called us back. And actually the surgeon who did the surgery to her, mm -hmm. on her, mm -hmm. was supposed to leave the country uh, on Friday, mm -hmm. the day of the surgery. Mm -hmm. But he postponed his journey. He was an old guy. Mm -hmm. he, he was a, he's an American, a white man. He said he was not going to go until he's done the surgery on her. Mm -hmm. And we've also gotten the biopsy and everything. Mm -hmm. And that's what he did actually. After a week, 
week or two, we went back for the biopsy mm -hmm. and they told us the results were positive. Mm -hmm. But they said something like this, I, I can't remember the name of that tumor. It was something like sarcoma. Mm -hmm. um, they said these tumors don't um, visually get healed, as in it, it's, it's after chemotherapy, okay. someone can actually survive from it. Mm -hmm. So we were hopeful after that because once sure. they broke that news, oh, my heart sunk. I was very devastated, mm -hmm. devastated. Mm -hmm. and I didn't know what to do. Um, you look up to God, but you're still asking questions. Mm -hmm. You're wondering, God, how can you do this? Yeah. Why? Um, I mean, you, there's so much going on. But uh, we still say, you know what? After all, you're still God. You're That's the true. one who gave us this baby. Mm -hmm. So you're the one who's going to take care of her. Mm -hmm. And if, if it's your will to heal her, then be it. So we started our chemotherapy. Um, we went to Kenyatta now. We were referred to another doctor in Kenyatta where mm -hmm. we started our chemotherapy. Mm -hmm. And, uh, but we took a while before we started chemotherapy because we didn't have the finances. Mm -hmm. uh, but when we got the money, we started the chemotherapy and it used to cost around almost 40 to 50,000 for each session. And that is after every three weeks. Mm -hmm. So it was quite a strain yeah, on our yes. finances. Yeah. Uh, actually, cancer is a very, very expensive sure. disease. Mm -hmm. And if you can't afford it, I mean, you, you, your chances of survival are very minimal. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. So I started every three weeks we'd go for, for, for chemotherapy. Every three weeks we'd go for chemotherapy and they would run tests here and there. Mm -hmm. Then after, after how many chemos? I think six chemos or so, mm -hmm. uh, we took a break because the doctor told us to take a break mm -hmm. and uh, see how she's going to fare on. Mm -hmm. um, and then after that break is when now the, the tumor now came back again. And this time it came back with a lot of force yeah. because it went through her rectum to her intestines and to her, uh, uh, what is it? Um, as in it was all over mm -hmm. her stomach now. Mm -hmm. uh, we went back to Kijabe Hospital. Mm -hmm. The doctors uh, did a scan on her, but they said mm -hmm. this time we'll try and do the surgery, mm -hmm. but we're not sure how it's gonna be. Mm -hmm. So they took her into surgery for the second time. Uh, but they came back when she was still in surgery, the doctor came and, saw us and, you, and told us, you know what, the, the tumor has, has actually spread so much mm -hmm. and we'll have, to take out all, um, her, we'll have to take out all the bottom part mm -hmm. of, her, of her system, mm -hmm. including her, plus, oh, the, what is it called? The <laughs> no, the bladder. Mm -hmm. um, uh, the, gosh, reproduct the reproductive yeah. system oh, yeah. will have to take it out too. Mm -hmm. uh, we were like, oh my goodness, do we want to go to do? Do you want to have faith that God is going to heal yeah. her or do you want to go through this? Mm -hmm. So we said, because we haven't decided on what to do, mm -hmm. let's do this. Because she can't poo poo, she can't mm -hmm. so well. Uh, they say they'll just do what they call um, a colostomy. Mm -hmm. They'll remove her intestines, mm -hmm. her big intestines from here. That's where she's going to poopoo from. Mm -hmm. And then they'll just uh, slit her hair. That's where her susu is going to... So she had to go back on diapers. Mm -hmm. And uh, uh, How old is she? She was now about two, two, two years and... and, um, two, and a half. two and a half. Yeah. Almost two and a half years. Mm -hmm. And she was actually... Reina stopped using diapers when she was about one year three months mm -hmm. so she actually had to go back to diapers again and she really didn't like having a colostomy back she actually used to complain a lot because you see it's something you stick on her she poops you remove it and uh, we thank God for Aga Khan University. Mm -hmm. uh, colostomy bags are very expensive, mm -hmm. uh, but Aga, Aga Khan Hospital actually supplied us with the colostomy bags, mm -hmm. so that one cast our costs mm -hmm. in the long run. Mm -hmm. So we used to change her every now and then. We used to, to, to take care of her. She was in a lot of pain. Uh, they even gave her the most, the, the strongest uh, pain drug, the painkiller, which was morphine, but at times yeah. it wouldn't work. Yeah. Uh, the good thing with her is after chemotherapy, she'd be herself. Mm -hmm. She'd walk around because uh, the tumor would subside. Mm -hmm. Then after the, the first, second week, the tumor would come back again. Mm -hmm. So she'd be in pain again. Mm -hmm. And she now had a limp because it was on one side of her leg. Mm -hmm. So she actually had a limp. Now she'd walk with a limp, she'd run with a limp. But she was a very jovial girl, mm -hmm. we thank God in mm -hmm. the long run, yeah. She was really young. Yeah, she was very young. When, how old was she when uh, she was diagnosed? One year, three, two months. One year, two, two months. months. Yes. Wow. Okay. Before you carry on with uh, the story, uh, let me take you back to when she was diagnosed. And uh, I remember something even, you know, the late Bob Collimo talked about before, of course, his passing on. Mm -hmm. And he said the main or the 
problem when one is diagnosed with cancer is usually how they take in you know the news that indeed you have cancer because even with all the stories that I've done so far most of the people that I talk to say the first thing you think of is death you know yes. once you once you're told you have cancer or a relative has cancer so how is it for you this is a one year and three month old mm -hmm. baby how was it for you sir? it was terrifying it was scary mm -hmm. and actually actually uh, it's so true that cancer cancer is like such a huge mm -hmm. name that when it's mentioned it just gets you into panic yeah I was like, now where are we going to get all the cash to take care of this baby, you know, mm -hmm. trying to look for ways of uh, treating the cancer. And again, looking at the awareness of our uh, income or system of income, mm -hmm. they were so limited. My salary was way, way down, less than 50,000. And then now at the moment, she's not working. Mm -hmm. So everybody comes back to me. I'm like, okay, how am I going to conquer this? And again, on the other side, um, where I come from, I, I went through a lot when I was growing, growing up. Mm -hmm. And um, I was so used to trouble. So to me, like, it was kind of soft. This is my way of life. But to her again, it was like uh, a thick cloud of sadness and, you know, just darkness upon our lives. We are like, okay, now it has come. What next? Mm -hmm. And now we were in a mix for quite some time. Mm -hmm. I remember um, I had to look for extra sources of income. I would pick my car go to the road, pick guys from Nairobi, ferry them from Nairobi to West, and I'll do that even an overnight. You know, I'm only making a profit of like 2,000 shillings. It wasn't even enough to service uh, the bills in the house, the medication and all that. And I was just worried, I was just there. Mm -hmm. But as a man, again, you have to wake up and do what you have to do, yeah. Mm -hmm. It was really, yeah. Sure. Uh, for me, as I, as I said earlier, when they told us that she has cancer, mm -hmm. I was in so much despair. Mm. I, I was so discouraged. I didn't know how to pick myself up from all of it. Uh, but what gave me hope mm. is when the doctor said that it's, it's, it can, she can survive yeah. from it. Yeah. Yeah. That gave us hope. Mm. But you, you still think, I mean, there's so many guys who've had cancer, they've said they've survived it, then they end up having re the, the cancer recurring again yeah. so all those thoughts run through your head mm -hmm. and you don't know how you're gonna handle it yeah. you don't know whether to pray mm -hmm. you don't know whether to cry mm -hmm. you don't know whether as in you you, ju you just don't know what to do mm -hmm. you're so discouraged in uh, and you don't know how just to handle the whole situation mm -hmm. yeah. all this while how is you know support from family from friends from uh, you know your friends from church sure uh, we used to get a lot of support from friends, mm -hmm. from friends around from church. Actually, I'm a pastor. I work uh, mm -hmm. at a Jubilee Christian Church, Parklands. Okay. So they would throw in some cash in there, prayer support, and uh, visits from visits, mm -hmm. yeah. members and mm -hmm. family and yeah. friends. Yeah. yeah. Okay. Mm -hmm. Okay. So now, uh, where where you stopped before I asked about you know the reaction after the diagnosis because you say after chemo she would be back all bubbly and mm. everything but then at some point you know she'd go back to being in pain we did talk about being given even the strongest painkillers you know just to subside the pain but now take us through after that um, so um, actually we never even used to sleep mm -hmm. she would wake up in the middle of the night and say I don't want to sleep on the bed I want to go sleep because we actually had to take back to her to come back in, into our bed because mm -hmm. we, would, we wouldn't risk li leaving her to sleep in her own bed alone because she'd get fevers, she'd get um, agitated easily. So we had to actually monitor her. Most of the time we wouldn't sleep. Mm -hmm. We were so tired. We were so, uh, 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 we were so just frustrated, tired and everything that mm -hmm. was happening. Mm -hmm. After and, and I remember even during the same time, mm -hmm. she was rotting. You know, and the pus and blood was oozing out of her, mm. her bum, and it was smelling, you know, it was, it was pathetic. Yeah, you couldn't just like, you know, have her around and then you're like, we, we're okay. Mm. It wasn't okay at mm. all. She was rotting like on daily basis, mm. on daily basis, and smelling, you know. Yeah. And at time, that time she wants you to share the blanket the with blanket, her. The blanket, she says, kindly, may I share your blanket with you? Cover, Cover me, me with, your with your blanket. Hold me on your laps. Let's go share the two-seater seat. No, take me back to the three-seater. Let's go back to the bedroom. Let's she sleep on the floor. Bed, on the floor. But you have After, to, you know. But, and you have, you, have to you have to be strong for her, you yeah. know. It's like yeah. you're there with her. Yeah. yeah. But all this while, yeah. I don't know, how is it affecting you? Because she's your child you have to be there for her but how are you taking this whole thing in oh, you just have to be strong for her but when uh, when you go to the bathroom you mm -hmm. cry 
yourself mm -hmm. uh, when she's not there you 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 just you, you just let it out on yourself because at that time you can't even pray mm -hmm. honestly mm -hmm. when you're in that situation the last thing on your mind is even god because mm -hmm. you you you're just wondering what is happening so you don't know what to do mm -hmm. you don't know what to say to her to mm -hmm. encourage her mm -hmm. but you just have to be there as a parent you know they say um, a child to, to I mean the child means everything to, mm. to a parent so if you can't be there for your child I'm sorry then then, then th there's no one else who will be there for mm -hmm. her because mm -hmm. your love is unconditional mm -hmm. and uh, and when we were in hospital, I actually had some other lady saying, when my husband saw this situation, he walked out. Mm. Because most men don't, yeah. they don't know how to handle yeah, this. True. You know, we, we women, at least we were given yes. that stamina by God. Mm. So we know how to handle tough situations when they come our way. Mm -hmm. And because you're a mother and you're the one who carried this you baby, you can't, you can't neglect the baby. Sure. So, and I thank God for him because he was there the whole time. Mm. He never walked out on us. In fact, if if my baby saw the daddy, if Reina saw the daddy, he would just brighten up. Mm -hmm. And most of the time when we were in hospital, when they are even trying to look for her veins, veins and everything, mm -hmm. she would say, no, wait for my daddy. Mm -hmm. She wouldn't the... let any doctor touch her before her daddy comes. Mm -hmm. So I thank God that he was there for her. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Wow. Okay. Uh, so we'll be taking a break shortly, but uh, we could maybe fast forward to when probably it sort of like took a a toll on her um, it took a toll on her in 2011 mm -hmm. um, we didn't even see it coming mm -hmm. because we would go for chemo she'll be fine everything would be fine but there was a time we went to see a doctor and the doctor gave us uh, I mean he, he had given up on her mm -hmm. and uh, we didn't know what to do now so we used to go for chemo but we were so discouraged because he told us on our face there's nothing much they can do mm -hmm. And that's when we knew uh, here it's either God comes through or she's gone. Mm. So in November last, in the November of 2012, that's when her health deteriorated. Mm. She refused to eat. There's a week she just refused to totally eat. Mm -hmm. And uh, what she used to love eating was chapati. She'd actually wake up in the middle of the night and say, I want chapati. Mm. If you don't have chapati in the house, doom, you're doomed. Mm -hmm. So, and sometimes she'd say, I want chicken on bone. <laughs> or meat on bone. Quite some great taste. <laughs> oh, she say I want chips. Mm. Those, those are her, our favorite things mm. that she would ask for. But this time she doesn't want to eat mm. anything. You bring her favorite foods, she doesn't want to eat anything. I tried to force her to take porridge, she would not eat anything. Mm. So we had to go back to hospital. Mm. And that day, I, I remember it very clearly in my mind, it was a Friday. We went to the hospital because um, she had refused to eat totally and mm -hmm. she had just she was on chemo mm -hmm. that, that week that was the week she was having chemo and the doctor said she he can't con continue uh the the, the drug on her mm -hmm. if she's not eating mm -hmm. so we stayed home for about two days then we went back on friday on friday we went to see the doctor the doctor said here yeah, there's nothing much we can do in fact when they checked her oxygen level in the body they were like how did you survive with this baby the whole night she has no oxygen in her body so it was just God who kept her. Yeah. Mm. And um, uh, we, at that time we were in Aga Khan. And uh, they told us they have to admit her in ICU. But they, had, they, they wanted a certain amount of money, which we mm. couldn't raise then. Mm -hmm. Then they gave us an option to take her to another hospital. So we got an ambulance. Uh, we transferred her to Avenue Hospital. That's where now she was put um, in HDU. Mm -hmm. Uh, with the support system all over her then the doctor came and saw us and she he asked us uh, what do you want us to do if she if she she doesn't she stops breathing mm -hmm. would you like us to let her go would you like us to uh, to revive her mm -hmm. um, the first few times we we agreed for them to revive her but after a while we see if she she's gone just let her go because mm -hmm. I mean she's fought She's really fought this and she's been a very good fighter. Mm. Sure. She survived with cancer for almost two years. It's so been exactly two years. And, and if she's going, let her go. Mm. Um, just a week, two weeks before that, my husband came home that day. And actually that day we thought she was gonna go mm -hmm. because she was really having trouble breathing mm -hmm. and uh, she, was, she was like almost convulsing. So my husband took anointing oil mm -hmm. and prayed over her mm -hmm. and even asked her to accept Jesus mm -hmm. in her life mm -hmm. and uh, said, God, we are at peace with you. Whatever you, you decide, you to, decide do to do with her, we are okay. 
we are okay with it. Mm -hmm. But for me, it wasn't okay mm -hmm. because what I had gone through, the times that when all this was going through, mm -hmm. I used to sometimes read the Bible and God would actually encourage me and I had so much faith that and my baby and assurance that, okay. that my baby was going to survive mm -hmm. this. Mm -hmm. So when he came and did that, I was still struggling with it. I was saying, no, 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 sweets, don't say that. Mm -hmm. I mean, our baby is going to survive. God has promised me that she's going to live. She's, he, he is going to heal her. Mm -hmm. But I didn't know the form of healing that God was going to take. It was mm -hmm. not going to be physical. Apparently, it was going to be uh, spiritual. spiritual. He was going to take her home mm -hmm. and rest her fully mm -hmm. and heal her fully. Mm -hmm. So for me, it was a bit hard. Mm -hmm. I didn't want to accept it. Mm -hmm. I didn't want to, to agree with him that she's going to go. Mm -hmm. But um, I just said, okay, it's fine. Mm -hmm. But I went back to God and told him, God, you promised. So I'm waiting and I'm watching. Mm -hmm. After that, when she, she when we were in hospital, and at that time I was pregnant now, mm -hmm. I think I was pregnant three months. Mm -hmm. And um, when she, uh, when, okay, because I couldn't now, when we were in hospital, I couldn't sleep with her on the same bed. Mm -hmm. So I would sleep on another bed because mm -hmm. I was or already had other emotions that I was going through. Mm -hmm. And she's sick here. So I didn't know how to balance the mm -hmm. two. Mm -hmm. So just during uh, that morning, the father came and saw her before he went to work. He came and saw her in the morning because she asked for him. So he came, he saw her, they even talked. She even asked for tea tea and bread so she was given tea and bread but she took one bite she refused mm -hmm. after a short while when the father left now she went into a coma she slipped into a coma mm -hmm. um, she she was in a coma for a bit I th for about I think two hours or so mm -hmm. then she just went mm. okay I think we'll be taking a short uh, break but uh, when we come back sir, I'd like to come back with you uh, for you to tell us, you know, you, you're the man of the house. Yes. You have to be strong. Yes. But I can imagine it wasn't easy when you're praying for her, when you're asking her to accept Jesus, you know, just to be ready for any eventuality. It isn't easy for you. So when you come back, well, you'll be telling us about that. But we need to take a short break. Uh, keep sending in the feedback. I see it at Grace Korea KE, at KTN is KE. I'll be sampling it at the end of the program. Uh, stay with us.